Mike, Red Fox, Dynex, 30 Series. We're going to get started mining Dynex on every 30 Series card, which I have in my test rig here. A2000, 3060, 3060 Ti, 3070, A4000, 3070 Ti, 3080, 3080, 12 gigabyte. 3080 Ti, 3090, and finally 3090 Ti. And if you have any of these GPUs and you're looking to mine Dynex, stay tuned because I'm going to get you started with some really good overclocks to be the most efficient, which is my goal right now in mining Dynex. So if you're not familiar with Dynex, you can check them out on dynexcoin.org, learn a little bit more about the project, get involved in the community. And of course, you need some mining software to get started which is gonna be one zero miner, is the only NVIDIA miner as of making this video. Current version is one, two, three. Get it on either Windows or Linux. And in this video, we're gonna be going over Hive OS. If you do not use Hive OS, I highly recommend you do. It is so easy and so approachable. Referral link is in my video description. So let's give you the results right up front in case you wanna just get started. Here you go, here's all the testing that I've done for all of these GPUs includes the performance, the power, the efficiency, the core locks, the core offsets, and the memory lock or memory offset, which we're gonna go over in a little bit for all the GPUs that I have. So hopefully this gets you started. And in the rest of this video, I'm gonna go over the all overall approach and give you a little bit of look behind the scenes on how all this works. So you have the information to get the best performance efficiency wise out of your specific GPU because even a 3070 versus another 3070 might use a different lock core clock, uh, et cetera, to get some different performance. Let's take a look over in my Hive OS here. You can see all those GPUs listed, all the performance that they're currently getting. And I'm gonna talk now about the overall approach to this. So the first thing that I do is I lock my fans at 100%. So there's no variations in fan speed that might adjust the wattage as I'm calculation, calculating efficiency. From there, for most GPUs, I will lock the memory at 5,000, uh, which will lock it depending on the, gener the GPU at 5,000 or 5,001. And you can see some of them have a memory offset instead, and we'll go through that in just a little bit. But for most GPUs, I use that approach. And this is the same approach if you've been mining Caspa or Ironfish or uh, even Flux and some, several of the others, Radiant, use this same approach. So once I've locked my memory, once I've set my fan speed, then it's time for me to go in and start figuring out what my core clock needs to run at to be the most efficient, the most amount of kilohash for the least amount of power. This is your starting place that I give to you. It is my gift. So start with these core locks and if your GPU is going to be different, and what you do is you go up and down in increments of 15, plus or minus 15 from this starting, pla starting place, and you're going to see if it gives you a better efficiency or not. And you can track all of that over in the mining software, which is a fantastic display of data. You can see the efficiency right here, along with the core clocks and memory clocks that are set for each individual GPU. Once you do that, once you've found the most efficient core clock, you have your memory locked and you have your fan speed set at 100%, the next thing you can do is start bringing back the wattage. And that's where we're gonna talk about the flight sheet. In the flight sheet, you're gonna be able to set a core offset. And that core offset, I'd recommend you start around 300 and then just go up increments of 10 from there until you get a crash. And what's happening here is it's reducing the voltage that the GPUs are using and bringing down your wattage. And how you can monitor this as you're doing it is if you go in Hive Shell and type NVIDIA-SMI-Q-D voltage, it will show you the voltage currently for every single GPU in your rig. And you can watch this drop as you do the core offset higher. And eventually you're gonna to get to a place where it won't drop any further. And you know that you've hit the limit for that GPU. For me, 310 applies to every card in this rig. Certain cards can run higher to save me an additional watt or two. But for me, I just like finding one that works on every GPU and I will set it there. I'm a little different because I have a really mixed rig right now, but this will apply very well if you have a like 
12 card 3070 rig or something like that, you'll find really one that will work on every GPU fantastic. But there may be cards in this rig that I can get up to 360 um, or 380 even, but for me, I'm just gonna stick in that 310. But you can go a little bit further if you choose to. One thing you may have noticed here is I have my memory locked at that 5001, and there's a couple asterisks as I'm skipping the memory lock on certain GPUs. That's gonna bring me back over to some of the GPUs that I instead have a memory offset, a negative memory offset. And the reason I did this is because in one of the previous 1.0 minor releases, they actually said locking clocks to 5000 or 5001 might not be the best choice for efficiency, particularly on high-end GPUs in each generation. So I tested every GPU, and it's true, it did apply to my higher-end GPUs, 3070 Ti, 3080, 3080 12 gigabyte, and 3080 Ti. Those specific GPUs were more efficient when I did a memory offset. You can see negative 2000 on some and negative 1000 on others, though my 3090 and 3090 Ti still liked having the memory locked instead of the offset. And you can see back in the minor what your memory clock is currently running at, whether you have an offset or not, it's provided right here in the mining software. So that is how to get started. That is how to adjust overclocks for your specific GPUs. Let's take a look at some charts here to really just see what the most efficient GPU is, what kind of results we're getting here. So you can see that as far as the most performance is gonna be the 3090, because that 3090 Ti can get really, really efficient. You can get it down and really lower the wattage on the thing. You're gonna sacrifice some hash rate, even though it's a better GPU, but you can get it really far down compared to 3090. There's just something about the architecture on that GPU that allows me to do that, and I've seen that testing multiple algorithms. So 3090 is gonna give you the most hash rate, use absolutely the most power, uh, but for me, I'm absolutely looking at what's the most efficient. So let's take a look at that right here. So to no surprise, you can see the A4000 coming up as the most efficient GPU, and then followed closely by 3070 and 3060 Ti. Again, no real surprise there. Those GPUs have been the most efficient for a long time mining pretty much every algorithm. But then the worst one always, 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 always is that 3080, 12 gigabyte. I absolutely despise that card. I think I just might set it on fire because it is so terrible, though I keep it around for testing. Anyway, I think that's it. I think I covered it all. Hoping to miss anything. That is mining Dynex on 30 series GPUs. And I hope this helped you in any way. If it did, please hit the thumbs up, leave a comment down below. Uh, that you're thankful for me and all the work that I do. I'm just kidding. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below and join my Discord. I'll have all the overclocks in the hash rate channel in there and um, social media stuff is all down in the video description too. But really, just appreciate you all and I hope you take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next video.